You're listening to the Keep It Real podcast with Zach Phelan, where we talk everything real estate, real business, and real life. My name is Zach Phelan, and I'm a real estate investor, realtor, entrepreneur, and family man. This podcast is brought to you by HomeScout. HomeScout shows you every home listed on the market in real time, meaning if a home you're looking at goes under contract with another buyer, you will see it in real time. You can track homes that have sold, save favorite homes, get notified when a home hits the market in a neighborhood you're watching, and so much more. The best thing about HomeScout is your information is 100% secure. The only people who can see your phone number and email is yours truly, Zach Phelan, and my lender, Jenna Groff. Most people don't know this, but other apps and platforms sell your information to at least three realtors and seven lenders. That's 10 phone calls and multiple emails from 10 different people. Keep your information safe in our hands. We promise not to abuse it. Download the Home Scout app now. The link is below in the show notes or email me and I will send you a direct link. If prompted for a VIP code, use my phone number 928-853-0683. Go download the Home Scout app now and start searching for that new home today. What is up, you guys? Welcome to episode one of the Keeping It Real podcast with Zach Phelan. This is an episode where we interview our lender. Her name is Jenna Groff. She is an amazing woman. And not only that, she is a kick-ass businesswoman as well. And we brought her on to ask her questions about the buying process from the lender's end of the deal. And just to ask her some more questions about how to go about getting your loan and what you can do ahead of time before you begin your purchase process to set yourself up for success for when you do go ahead and buy. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Hello, Facebook. Welcome. My name is Samantha Huger. Zach Fadlin. And Jenna Groff. And we are here to talk to you guys today about your first steps to buying a home in 2019. Uh, so if you are buying a home in 2019, go ahead and like do an emoji, hands up emoji or a thumbs up emoji. Let us know because we're going to answer some of the biggest questions about, especially if you're like a first time home buyer, about buying a home in 2019. So we are here with our friend Jenna today. Jenna, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. So um, I'm a Flagstaff local, born and raised. I went on to Phoenix to ASU for college. And while I was in college, I realized that I needed a job. <laughs> um, so I started working at Wallach and Wolf Mortgage down in our Mesa branch. Started working in our secondary marketing department, which basically deals with interest rates, investor communications, and relationships, and basically anything that has to do from your lock or your loan, um, as we say in mortgage terms. I moved back up to Flagstaff since I was born here about a year ago and have been mortgage originating ever since. That's awesome. <clears throat> so as a mortgage originator, is that what your technical title would be? Or? Um, so mortgage originator, I call myself a mortgage advisor because I like to educate all of my clients. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So do we. That's like our big thing, especially with Zach. Zach no, is like all educating. about educating mm-hmm. uh, and that's a great reason why we're here doing yeah. this today. Um, so as a mortgage originator educator, what would you say your most frequently asked question is? All right. So the most frequently asked question that I get is how do I get pre-qualified? Yes. It's, right. It's a really, really simple process. Um, basically I need to see a couple of your documents. So I need to verify your income. We need to see what kind of, um, assets you've got, and then we need to pull credit which then in turn gives me a full picture of what you as a person financially look like. Um, Basically, the biggest drawback that I see with pre-qualifications is going to come to credit and compared to your income. So we're looking at your debt to income ratios as well as credit. I do Mm -hmm. have a lot of home buyers coming in that have not great credit, so we have to work on that. And what's that that number? So credit scores range from 350 to 800. Typically, we can do mortgages down to 530, but interest rates are not going to be very pretty. Wow. Um, conven- I always tell people 640. Right. So conventional mortgages start at 620. So that's where, if you're wanting to put more money down, you yeah. want to do a conventional mortgage. Yeah. Because um, then you're not paying that upfront mortgage insurance. Okay. That's good to know. Because everyone always asks me, what, 
what's my credit got to be? And I just tell, if you're around 640, you're good. If you're right above 600, we can probably make it work in a you know quick amount of time. And then you guys will do like credit repair. Yes. So me personally, if we have a consultation, we'll pull mm -hmm. your credit and I'll sit down with you and discuss everything in your credit report and how doing certain things can increase your credit score. Um, if it's something that I'm not going to be able to help with just mm -hmm. myself, I do work with a couple of mm -hmm. credit repair companies. Nice. Um, it is a monthly fee for them to help with your credit, but if it's something that I'm not going to be able to help with personally, I always refer out to somebody and we follow up with them to make sure we can get you to work. This is what I tell people. Pay down your debts <laughs> and save up some money. And then you're going to look a lot better. Yep, yep. And definitely if you have some collections on your accounts you don't just want to pay them off and be done with it because in the short term it will affect your credit re report negatively so we always want to say that you have to is that talk just, to them is that the same that. with credit cards too it can be it really depends because i have noticed that before if i made like a large payment right. to my credit card my my credit actually went down so it depends um if your credit if you pay off your whole credit card and they close the account it oh. will affect you negatively okay, yeah, I knew that. um but really, we have a lot of what-if scenarios that we can run with the credit bureaus that pulled the credit. So we can see if you pay off this credit card by $400, my score will go to right here. Nice. Okay. Um, so we nice. can do a rapid rescore without pulling another credit report That's nice. and just sending it straight into the credit bureaus. That is something that I get asked a lot when people, mm -hmm. when we, when you know, I start talking to them about, you know, you need to go and get pre-qualified. They're like, I, you know, I'm worried about pulling my credit again because I don't want it to ding my credit. Right. Um, I will say that we can pre-qualify you based off of generic credit numbers. However, what we give a person as a pre-qualification, I do have to have a hard credit report pulled. Mm -hmm. But if we're wanting to just start shopping for homes, I can do it based off of a generic credit credit score. I will say that Credit Karma is not your credit score. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, I keep track of my Credit Karma. <laughs> um, every credit bureau calculates your credit differently. They all have different algorithms and Credit Karma's algorithm is different than yeah. all three credit bureaus yeah. that we use. I've seen that too. So credit's a big one. And then I always tell people like they're going to need to send you a list, a, a couple documents, and it's not that bad to get a hold of. Mm -hmm. So what's, what's that list of documents? So typically we are going to need a copy of your driver's license. We're going to need two months of your pay stubs, two years of your W-2s. Two W-2s. And then if you're self-employed, two years of your tax returns. Depending on what our automated underwriting system says, we can do one year of personal tax returns for you and your business. It just depends how long your business has been open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so let's say like you opened a business and you've only been open for a year and you've made some good money in that first year, they can run it off of that and you'd be able to buy a house. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> So basically, your your business has to be open for five years in order to use one year credit mm. returns or um, tax returns. So, in if you've only been open for two years, we will take both of your years tax returns and we'll average your income. Okay. So it will never be one year's income unless you've been open for more than five years, and our automated underwriting system says that we can do it that way. Copy. Good to know. Good to know. What do we got next? Um, I was going to ask you, Zach, like in your opinion, <clears throat> first thing, what should somebody do when they're like, okay, it's 2019, time to sell my house, time to buy a new house, time to buy our first house, whatever it is, what would you say your, the first thing to do is? You got to create like a good game plan and a lot of people start doing stuff that they don't need to do. I'm going to, I'm going to start landscaping my house real quick. No, well, that's not always the best thing to do to get ready to sell it. You got to call, you know, contact me, contact me. Contact Jen and say, hey, I'm getting ready to sell. I want to sell my house in June of this year. Or your local realtor. If you don't have one, we can refer you. Yeah, like, we'll wherever you, you are. Wherever you're at. So it's like, call me up. Let's create a good game plan on which, what you're going to do. Um, if you're going to talk to your lender, say, hey, I'm going to sell, sell my house. And then we're going to have to buy a house, obviously. you got to talk to your lender. If I'm going to be selling your house, hey, it's good to do this and this and this to get ready to do so. Um, or, you know, some, some people just don't, they don't have a good game plan. It okay. drives me crazy. So that's what I like to do. It's like, all right, let's set it up. Let's set the let's set what we're doing for the next couple months to get ready to sell this thing. Right. I will say that I've had several clients who I've met with over two years ago, and they're just now shopping for homes. Mm -hmm. Having that plan and knowing how to build your credit and how to mm -hmm. increase your income and get rid of all of those debts that you do have, meeting with somebody and knowing 
that this is my big picture. This is where I want to get. Mm -hmm. What are the steps to get there? Mm -hmm. It can be a two-year process. So oh, meeting sure. with somebody ahead of time yeah. and knowing how, what's going to increase my home's value in the next year that I can do so that we can get into that move-up home, that bigger three, home that we want. Three, yeah, three uh, transactions we did last year were the same boat. One guy, um, one family was uh, two years out, took two whole years. We put an offer in when we first met, and it wasn't good. We backed out of it. Made this whole game plan, came through, bought them a house last year. They love it. And two other good friends of mine, same deal. They're about a year out. And I was like, just wait, just do this, do this. Let's talk about it. I saw them at the gym, so you know, it was easy. <laughs> but I love what you guys are saying, too, because it's going to help the person to be able to be pre-qualified for, you know, hopefully for an amount more than they expected. Their income has increased. Their debt to ratio is lower, mm -hmm. whatever that is, so that you're in a home that, like, you're really excited about. And it does take that planning that you guys are talking about. Mm -hmm. And I talk a lot about, you know, future planning with real estate. Like, okay, what's your plan? Are you stay here forever? You'd be here for two years, you'd be here for five years. Are you planning on on moving down to Phoenix or wherever in six months' time? Like what's the what's the plan? And then there's a couple of steps through there that make sense for them as the individual buying a house. Right. You know, where do you want to buy it strategically? Right. Locations around Flagstaff, et cetera, et cetera, Williams Parks. And then, you know, are you gonna be there for two years, five years? One of the ones I did last year was like, Hey, what's the, what's the game plan? Is this the forever home or is this the home that we're just gonna get into? You know, are we keep it as a rental, or we gonna resell it? You know, in a couple of years, or we do some, you know, some sweat equity to the house to then sell it and move into something bigger. You know, what's that plan and where do we want to buy it at? Some of those questions. Yeah, that's good stuff. What you got? So, Jenna, like, I know you've got a graphic here for interest rates. Talk a little bit about interest rates. What are what are people looking at for this year? Is the market going to crash in 2019? Uh, are we hitting a bubble? Like, what's going on? All right, so I will say that I don't have a crystal ball because if I did, I'd be on a beach somewhere. I do. <laughs> um, basically, interest rates are still at historic lows. Um, mm -hmm. We're not at 16 and 18 percent like we have been in years past. 16 percent <laughs> on your house. That was in the 80s or something, wasn't it? Yes. Wow. Yep. Um, I will say that interest rates over the last 12 months have been increasing and they are still going to be increasing. They will not be drastic increases. Um, but we are She's expecting got this graphic them. here for you. Can you read that? Because I can't. Tell them what this is. It's okay if you can't read it. You can just and see it. I don't it. know if it's inverse or not. But basically, oh, interest not. rates have been going up. So this is January of 2018, and this is January of 2019. So interest rates have steadily been trickling up. However, this whole graph is only about 1% of an interest rate. So in the long perspective of things, 18% would be way off the camera. Hmm. So we're still doing pretty good. Okay. Um, That's good we, to know. Yeah, we are expecting interest rates to continue to rise. However, they should not be rising, I would say, over 6%. However... Depending on your credit, your loan to value, and your debt to income ratios, where you're buying a home, your mm -hmm. interest rate can be higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely also depends on any programs that you're using. Down payment assistance programs are going to have a higher interest rate because it's free money that they're giving you. Um, Let's <clears throat> talk about that a little bit. Okay. I want, how does that work? So we do, we do have several down payment assistance programs um, in Coconino County. We have our Home Plus loan. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're going to get between zero and five percent of your loan or your purchase price that you're going to be able to put towards your home. Um, for the Home Plus program, it is a program where that free money is not technically free until three years. So what ends up happening is over those three years, every single month, a portion. I guess one thirty-sixth of that money would be deducted. So if you sold your home in two years, you still owe them that one year's left of the money that you borrowed. Mm -hmm. um, those interest rates are in the six percent right now. How, again, it's free money, so that's why it's going to be higher. Um, there are um, credit requirements, loan-to-value requirements. We can do manufactured homes, but there are loan-to-value requirements. So it's definitely something that you want to talk to your lender about um, looking so we, into. And we can do manufactured homes. That's a big one here at Flagstaff. Yep. Yeah, yep. we it's can huge. do manufactured Raise your hand if you're a Flagstaff buyer or Flagstaff area. Yeah. It's Manufactured homes are huge, especially for the first-time home buyers, because that price range is where a lot of people can yep. afford. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if you can get into it for you know very little down, and your mortgage payment is less than you're paying in rent, 
Right, which rents in Flagstaff are expected to go up, especially with yeah. the <laughs> increase in um, minimum wage that just Ooh, happened. Do we have a Flagstaff. question? Hang on, I can't read it. The increase in minimum wage plus all these used to be homes that were rentals are now, now turning into Airbnbs. So the, the market is shrinking on the availability of homes to rent, right? right. And, and they're just going through the roof. Yep. Like 1800 bucks is not, a month is not, you know, unheard of. Oh, not at all. 2000 $2,200 a month for a house. Like, so what? Right. Almost at this point, you're better off. You're better off getting into a mortgage and getting into your own home and you're paying your mortgage, not somebody else's. Mm -hmm. You are creating your own equity and your own wealth by having your own home. What you got on the question? It wasn't a question. It's a comment. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you guys are here learning about this, too. Um, so we had another question written down for you, Jenna. Um, and Zach wrote this question about the initial consultation. What do you call it? Oh, so yeah. it's our initial consultation. Um, basically, when I sit down with my first-time homebuyers or my homebuyers in general, I want to realize... Why are you buying this home? What's important to you? Um, is this your forever home? Are you buying this home to build your own wealth? What's your game plan look like? Is this your three, mm -hmm. five-year home? I want to know so that I can put you into the best position possible. Um, I'm always going to do your best interest at heart. I want to make sure that it's a program that you're going to love and it's a home that you're going to love because it's your home, your way. Mm -hmm. I love And that. I'm in the same boat. I don't sell a house to anybody. Yeah. I make sure their home is perfect and this is what they're going to want and this fits within their sphere and what their plan is. You know, that's a big part of, let's sit down, let's talk. What are we going to do? Right. Text me, call me, whatever. We right. go to coffee and we make this plan and sometimes it's a year-long plan. Right. Sometimes it's right. three months, you know, whatever. Yeah. Zach's definitely into like the no, no pressure sales. Like yeah, when no. we show houses and house. things like that. Yeah. We <laughs> can't make that decision for you. Yeah. It's, it's not up to us at all. Right. Mm -hmm. It's how you feel about the house. Right. Mm -hmm. I always look at it from a payment perspective. If you are mm -hmm. nervous about a payment, buying, buying a house and having a mortgage is scary. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here to take the scary out of that home purchase. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so I like to keep people where they're happy or a little bit below it. Yep. And then they're really good. Yep. <laughs> they're so like, okay. something that a lot of people don't know when they're, and I didn't even know this either. Jenna is the one who told me this, is that when you're looking for a home, if you start going to websites like realtor.com, zillow.com, you start downloading the apps and things like that, they can take your information and sell it. And a lot of times what will happen is you'll sign up and then you'll start getting phone calls, con like constant phone calls from different lenders, different realtors. I mean, and we, yeah, we've been there. We've, we've done that. But I didn't realize that, that your personal information could be sold to yeah. somebody else. So every um, time you sign up for one of those sites, on average, your information will be sold to three realtors and seven lenders. That's 10 phone calls every single time they sell your information. Mm -hmm. They don't have to sell it just once, it can be multiple times. So you're talking about 30 phone calls if they sell your information three times. Mm -hmm. I know I screen a lot of my phone calls. <laughs> I, I used to do it, we used to be on Zillow and yeah. people would click on a house and request information and I was one of the agents like, gotta call you real fast. We don't, we don't do <coughs> Zillow ads anymore. Just and I get, heads up. you're the fifth person to call me in the yeah. last 20 minutes. I'm like, oh yeah, we signed up on Zillow, didn't you? Yes. So if you don't want your information to be sold, um, Jenna introduced us to this really awesome uh, home buying app that I'm going to share the link to you guys right here so you guys can download the app right now and it keeps your information completely safe and you won't get all those phone calls and it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're outside of Flagstaff or anywhere. So tell us about all this right. Home Scout app. So it's called Home Scout. It is 100% of NMLS listings in real time. Mm -hmm. um, I always like to say shop like a realtor with your realtor. Yes. Um, it's private, password protected, and personalized just for you. Um, you will see Zach's beautiful face and my beautiful face on this app. Um, it is nationwide. So if you're in Florida, if you're in Texas, um, anywhere, it does not matter. You will see homes available in your area. It does work a lot like Zillow where you can put in your own search parameters, how many beds, how many baths prices you're looking at and it'll show you the homes available in your area. It'll also show you the sold homes available in your area. So there'll be red and yellow dots on it. Yellow dots will be sold homes, red dots will be available homes. And basically it's just so you can have a better view of what's going on in your neighborhood. Um, 
like I said, it's in real time. You'll be the very first person to know when a new home gets put on mm -hmm. the market. Like mm -hmm. you get notifications, right? It's, yep. And yep. So based on your search criteria, if it's a home that fits into your search criteria, you'll get an email right away when it goes on to the NMLS database. Yeah. Um, I will say that a lot of other applications, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, they don't have 100% of the listings. Not even close. Yeah. A lot of brokerages like to keep those in-house to try to get the sale in-house. Yes. Um, but since Because that's more money to them, just so you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So they won't put it out there. Yep. Or let's say that a home was actually sold six months ago, but that realtor has kept it on one of those websites for more calls coming in. But that home is really not available, so you're getting your hopes up. I would get a ton of those calls and people angry at me because this home has been sold for three months, but it's still on Zillow. Mm -hmm. No, it's on Zillow. Let's go look at it. I'm like, no, honey, it's sold. And that's why we <laughs> like this app so much is because literally what what we have access to as realtors is exactly what you guys are going to mm -hmm. get. And you can set it up. So like, I want a three bedroom, two bath at least. I want, you know, minimum square footage, things like that. And you can even do a map parameter too. Yep. And you'll get notifications. And your info is not sold. Yes. Yep. It's, it's just great. us too. Yeah, it's great. And um, you have access to all of the neighborhood statistics. So when you click on a home, you can see what school is around me and what rating does that school have. Where's the best Thai restaurant with in the area that you're looking at from that home? And usually it's not even a mile in our Flagstaff area. Yeah. <laughs> um, and basically, the Home Scout app, you can save you can save favorites. So if you find a home that you really like, you can save it as a favorite. And anytime the price changes, if it does get put under contract, you will be notified. If it comes off of contract, you will be notified. Um, so this is this is what sorry to interrupt, no, but this is what I like right here because when I educate my clients on the on the market, I'm like, you need to actually watch the market. If you're in a tight price range where there's com where it's competitive and a home hits the market and they don't believe me that three offers are going in the first day oh, and another, we've had more than that. And like, another two or three yeah. offers are going in the second day and then the home is sold like that and they're like, Oh man, I was I didn't even get to go see it. I didn't get to go yeah. see it, Zach. Well, you know, and I'm like, Hey, I told you the market's gonna be competitive in this range. If you can see it, say, Okay, look, we're six months out from buying and uh, let's start watching the market, let's see what happens here. Ooh, we like this house, let's save it, let's watch it. Holy crap, it's sold. That's sold in a week. Oh, that's sold in two days. That's the real Sometimes market. hours. And hours. And then you know. And then you're like, okay, well, when I, guess what? If I like this home, there's probably another 10 people who like this home too. So let's see what the market is. Let's see how competitive it is out there. And, you know, are we going to be able to buy that home? Right. I will say that one of my favorite features about the app is the schedule showing button. So from, Me too. from the app, you once you find a home that you really like, it could have just gone on the market. It could have been on for... 10, 15 days. You can schedule showing straight from it. So let's say it is one of those really tight budget scenarios and you just got a notification that this home went on. You can look at it, click the schedule showing and Zach will know immediately. Mm -hmm. So there's no phone call that has to happen where it's, you know, I really like this house. Let's see if Zach's available. And you pick up the phone and let's say he's doing something which he's always available. Um, yes. But for some reason you don't get to go see that home that day. With this, he will know right away, and so will I. So I can call him too and say, "Hey, this person scheduled a showing. Let's, you know, let's get them out there because they're on that really tight budget." Yep, mm -hmm. and that's how it works. Yep. It really. Does. So we've got a couple of people like in Texas and in Idaho commenting, "Hey, Krista. Hey, Tannis. So um, if you guys don't already know a real estate agent, just always know, like, you can contact us. Ask and me, can, and I'll uh, find you can, a real one. Yeah, we can find somebody for you, especially in Idaho. Because I'm from Idaho, I got plenty of really great people up in Idaho who are real estate agents, um, but we can help you to find somebody who's going to be really good for you. When I say a real realtor, I'm, I'm just like, there's stats, say there's, you know, a thousand realtors, like maybe a hundred of us are the real realtors. So that's what I'm saying. I'll find you someone who is real professional, do a lot of transactions. They understand the market. They know what's going on. It's going to be a breeze to work with them. That's who I refer my my clients out to. Yep. And the app will work <laughs> in those areas as well. Like I said, yeah. it's nationwide, so you'll have access to app. Yeah, they're downloading it. They're, oh, look at all the hearts. Look at those hearts. <laughs> We've got people downloading. That's awesome. You are going to see these guys' faces. Um, just so you know, if you are buying with Zach and I, like, or Zach, it, it's kind of a package deal. Like, I do a lot of Zach's transaction work where I'm doing his paperwork and doing a lot of the behind the scenes stuff. Sometimes I'll come with him to showings and things like that. So it's like we're, we're a team. And then if you are in Flagstaff, you could have the three of us mm -hmm. as your complete real estate home buying team. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Anything yes, else? home buying can be so scary, Tana says, and I'd love to have heard this info before we bought our home three years ago, and that's why we're doing this. Mm-hmm. And we've, we we understand what it's like even before being in the professions that we're in. Like it, It's a very scary process. You don't know what you're doing, and having these questions answered and preparing ahead of time is really going to help right. you. I will say that the average person has eight transactions in their lifetime. They either refinance or buy a new home. Um, so it's always nice to keep up with your realtor and your lending partner. Um, basically, if something happens in your life and you need some money really quick, you can always refinance cash out. Um, if you like the government being yeah, shut down, right? If you realize, hey, I'm going to have triplets in the next nine months, and we have a two bedroom house, probably I'm going to need to upgrade. Yeah. Um, so just any of those life events, you just want to make sure that you're talking to us. Um, he is a, your realtor for life. I am a lender for life. Mm-hmm. We will always keep in touch and always make sure that you are exactly where you need to be. Mm-hmm. I like it. Any other questions in there? Um, you had written down that you wanted to ask Jenna some general questions, the talking points. Oh, these are these yeah. are more like fun questions. Yeah. So these aren't going to be necessarily home home buying related. Real these estate are just like stuff. fun real estate and uh, Flagstaff related too, I think. So if you're in Flagstaff, you might want to hang on and keep listening. Um, so we're going to ask Jenna some, some of her favorite Flagstaff. Uh, I'm going to ask Sammy too. because <laughs> Oh. But what is your favorite Flagstaff restaurant? So I am an Italian buff. Love pasta sh- way more than I should. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have to say that Fat Olives is my favorite restaurant in town. Um, funny story, actually, the man that owns Fat Olives actually paid for my first date without us knowing it. Um, oh, that's my cool. Right now. So yeah, there was um, it was interesting, and we love supporting him. And nice. I've not been, but every time I drive by there, it is so busy. And I was having a really long conversation with somebody who used to be a server there, and asking her like, "Why is it always so busy?" And so it must be really good. Yep, the fact that they had to knock down two buildings to build the parking lot says yeah, a lot. Yeah, probably show you something. <laughs> I didn't even know that. <laughs> What's yours, Sammy? My well, my favorite restaurant. <laughs> Zach's going to know the answer to this one. That's why he's got a big smirk on his face. Is Martin's. Martin's has the best... I'm, I don't know if you have a craving for Mexican breakfast. But I love Mexican food. Mexican breakfast. breakfast amazing. And I always get the volcano. Because uh, it's like chilaquiles Christmas style. So red sauce and green sauce. And it's amazing. <laughs> and it comes with the chorizo. Because otherwise... We're usually ordering it on the side. And to the to the flag locals here, got to give a shout out to Casa Duarte. Oh, yeah. Same owner. They're up there by Bashes. And you go in there and it's, lo- it's all locals. And usually you don't have to wait. Because yep. sometimes there is a wait to get into breakfast. Yeah. We've definitely gone up there with eight people. And they almost get us in every single yeah. time right away. It's Casa, like our secret. Yep. Yeah. Casa Duarte. Yep. And you know, maybe we shouldn't tell people our secrets. <laughs> I know. That's why I was kind of thinking. Okay. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Um, all right, let's let's get the book out. Oh, okay. Favorite book and or books you're reading, you know. So I'm reading this book right now. It was actually recommended to me by my father. Um, it's The Four Obsessions of an Extraordinary Executive. It's all about how to keep your company healthy um, and make sure that it has the longevity to last through any life cycle. Um, That's really cool. Wallach and Volk, the company that I work for, has been lending for over 80 years. We are the the oldest privately had held mortgage company in the United States. What? Yep. Wow, that's yeah. insane. Yep. That's um, awesome. We started lending during the Great Depression. Nobody was giving money to people in the Great Depression. Mm-hmm. We were. Um, again, interest rates were probably crazy, but it we were there. We were part of people's community. Um, the communities that Wallach and Bulk is in, we are the number one lender we are there to help everybody um that's in that community and we are a very well recognized name in those communities nice yeah i'm gonna read that book next it's probably that'll go that'll go down real fast yep um it was forced upon me by my father and i ended up loving it that's cool so that you're loving this one now any other ones that you're like this is a good book i'll reread harry potter any any day (laughs) me too i reread it last year Yep. When I mean, they were all on Kindle Unlimited, I was like, oh yeah, I'm rereading all of these. Yep. We she read a she read a book, we watched the movie. Yeah. Because they were out on HBO at yeah, the same it time. Was great. Yep, it was all, good times. all seven, eight, eight movies. I was so sad when it was over. <laughs> she was. 
Yeah, I just started the audio book. They're like 26 wow. hours long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good when you're driving. Yep, or exactly. Anytime, just exactly. Killing time. Favorite book, Sammy? Oh, favorite book? I read so many books. I don't have a favorite. I mean, I would say like not Stand fiction up. books, obviously, Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, standout books. I always <clears throat> recommend this book to people if you're kind of just getting started on like a self-help journey or you just need like a pick-me-up, feel better about yourself. It's a book called You Are a Badass. I like it because it is hilarious. She is so entertaining and it covers a really wide variety of personal development, uh, self-help topics just to make you feel good about life and feel good about where you're heading and things like that. So you are a badass. It's a great book. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to go with Compound Effect. I did a post about it yesterday and I had someone reach out to me already just like, is this the book? Because it's a great book. Easy to understand. Good, fast read. Very fast. And very powerful, very, very powerful. The principles in it are not hard to understand, and, and, and you'll just be off to the races if you actually use them. That, and then I read a lot of fantasy books to go to sleep. Yeah. At night, that's what me and my brothers all read books, and we'll go through these series, like 12 book long series. Samantha's like, how did you read 12 books? But, you know, we I go to sleep every night, read a chapter. He, he'll, he'll, you'll read for like hours. Well, sometimes, night, you sometimes you get to the end of the too. book and you just gotta right. keep cranking. I can't yeah. do that. I'm like read at nighttime five minutes and falling asleep, <laughs> or like a paragraph. Yeah, I could say I'll read a chapter and then I'm done with the book, and you're like, oh, it's three a.m. Yeah. Oops. Wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll I do. wish I could do that. I wish I didn't. When you fall get, when you're reading a good book and you get to the end of it, I just uh, I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop because it's midnight. It doesn't matter. It could be like the very last scene of Harry Potter when he's. <laughs> You know, defeating you know who, and I'm like, I gotta go to bed. I'm so tired. Okay, did you have a couple more questions you want to ask? Um, yeah. Favorite Netflix, HBO show, streaming show? All right. So I just started watching um, a show called The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Um, I am a history buff. Um, nice. Love it. I also, I mean, European history is my favorite, and it's all about the Vikings um, in England before it was England. It's really good. Um, Sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah nice. definitely I've seen some it gore, there. and it's nice. All right, I might have to check that one out. We're we're crushing Friends right now. <laughs> it's kind of historic <laughs> too. It's kind, you know, like I, I love it. We are we are really truly crushing it. When like you got four a four five episodes a night. Like I usually cook dinner every night. We got a four year old in the house. He's running around playing. So yeah. it's like you put on. You can't sit down and watch an hour long episode normally, but. You put on Friends in the background and you get a laugh and giggle and watch mm -hmm. it. And I watch it while we're cooking and we watch another episode while we're eating and then it's usually put that kid to bed. It's a very nice, lighthearted, but I right. we are, we do love like you know That's the Game of Thrones stuff. It. And I'm sure we would like the one that you recommended that last kingdom. Yeah, I like it. Um, well, you have your last question there. I know, but I skipped a couple. You want to see if I want to go over them? Morning and night rituals. Do you have any morning or night rituals? Um, so I guess in the mornings after I get ready, I always like to write down my to-do list. Um, it helps me focus what I'm going to be doing for that day. Um, if I have any consultations, if I need to reach out to any clients. Also, am I going to go to the gym that day? Or um, am I going to go have dinner with my sister and my two nieces? Um, I like to, I'm very organized and a pre-planner, so having my whole That's day listed <laughs> out is really nice. Um, obviously I'm able to take phone calls at any point and, you know, things get disrupted, but having a game plan for what my day is going to look like is really nice. That's awesome. You wake up like at a certain time, drink water, brush your teeth, it's, you know, um, have I mean, your coffee. <laughs> I have coffee every morning. Unless I'm out of creamer, because I'm that person that has creamer <laughs> with a side of coffee. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just, I like being aware of what my day is going to look like so I can mentally prepare. Nice. That's awesome. Sammy? Um, my ideal morning, it doesn't always happen, is waking up early before everybody else. What time? Um, well, right now it's like 5.30, because the boys have been sleeping in until like 8.00. Uh, some days, not, there's plenty of mornings when Zach is the one who wakes me up. And then I really like to like read and meditate if I, if I get the chance and journal, um, like reading and, and journaling is like my number one. And then sometimes I'll get the chance to meditate and, uh, just kind of like have a slow going morning so that I don't wake, I hate it in the morning when I wake up like really frazzled and just immediately have to go, go, go. That's why Especially I wake with her the up. Kid. 
Yeah. But I don't have that yet. <laughs> yeah. But Sebastian's going, my, 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 my. It, take, it takes it to a whole new level. Yeah. Crazy. Mm -hmm. I think when I get up, I like to get up early, dark out still. At least an hour before Sebastian wakes up is kind of what I need. Coffee first thing, sit down. Sometimes I'll read a book. Sometimes I'll listen to a book. Sometimes I'll listen to a podcast. Um, I always like to close my eyes and try to meditate or visualize for like 10 minutes. I'm not big at writing things down. I should be because everyone says to write stuff down. But uh, I will go through like my day, like what am I going to do? You know, what I'm premeditating and visualizing what my day is going to go and look like. Especially when, you know, there's a lot on the plate, a lot of work to be done and, mm -hmm. you know, go show houses, blah, 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 you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. I feel like the busier you get, the more focused you get. Yeah, yeah. I'll close my eyes and really just visualize for like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. Do some deep breathing. And then, um, yeah, try to get to the gym or move. Movement is big for me in the morning. I got to move, walk, go to the gym, drop Sebastian off, something. That's my morning ritual. So I think we're going pretty far. Last question. What are you grateful for today? Um, so I'm very family oriented and I am very grateful to be back in Flagstaff. I was in Phoenix for almost a decade. Um, you know, had, had a house down there, had a career down there and moving back up here with my family, um, especially my two nieces, they're four and six months old, has been the biggest blessing. That's awesome. Did you buy a house recently? I did. You were my realtor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, we'll do a whole house thing. Yeah. The remodel and everything. Oh, mm -hmm. so yeah, <laughs> I did buy my house and tore everything out within hours of owning it. Yeah, immediately. <laughs> That's awesome. What are you grateful for today? You. No. Uh, <laughs> That's the, I mean, that's like the biggest and easiest one for me is, is definitely Zach because he sometimes wakes me up in the mornings. He cooks a lot more than I do. Um, he keeps me motivated and he's very good at anticipating my needs, which I think makes him a really good realtor too because he's really good at anticipating like what your concerns might be, um, what your obstacles might be and uh, things like that so i'm, I'm the oldest of five that. boys plus a sister <laughs> like i know what's coming <laughs> i get it um today i think i'm grateful for doing this for starting some real marketing i've been talking about it for a year yeah yeah it's been talking about it for so a long time for me i'm grateful for finally taking this first step thank you so much jenna for doing this yeah, for because real. you know it's like I text her, I was like, hey, we're going to do video and stuff. She's like, okay. <laughs> Wasn't she awesome? She, yeah. she said she did, she'd never done video yeah, before. Really you good. You were great. So, totally natural. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'm just grateful to start this big year for 2019 podcast. Tons of video. We're going to do a ton of video. I'm going to use right. Facebook a lot. I'm always on Snapchat, too, doing funny stuff. Sort, <laughs> sort of funny stuff. He's hilarious on Snapchat. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, just grateful to be in action. Right. It's going to be a great 2019. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We appreciate you. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot Zach an email at ZacharyFalen at gmail.com. Again, if you didn't already, go and download that HomeSmart app so you can start mm -hmm. your home search this year. And yeah, we appreciate you. Jenna's email. And questions to Jenna. Yep. It's, um, Jenna.groff at W as in Wallach, V as in Volk, M as in Mortgage, B as in Bank.com. And um, both of us can answer any questions you guys have. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're not in our areas of, of um, Arizona, I guess, um, or Flagstaff, I don't know exactly where you're. We can do any of Arizona. Yeah. All of AZ. But we can always point you in the right direction. Um, we are a resource for you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks, we'll guys. Thank you again. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Hey guys, I'm going to keep it real with you. Thank you guys for listening to this week's podcast. If you could do us a huge favor and write us a review, it really helps out the channel. Samantha and I really, really do appreciate it. So go ahead and write us a review. Thank you so much. If you know anyone that I should be talking to, please do send them our way. We really appreciate it. See you guys for next week's episode. Until then, keep it real.